Hi there, I'm Jen, and this is Dream Prague, the channel where I give you an American's perspective on what it's like to live in Prague, Czechia. From my living room. I could be anywhere. I could be making all of this up. I could be in Brno. But today, the sun is shining, it's a national holiday, and all of the city folks have fled to their cottages in the countryside. So what do you say we get outside and film on location? Let's go. I should probably take you with me. Okay. It's always kind of lonely to celebrate American Independence Day when I'm in a different country. But the Czechs more than make up for it by having two back-to-back -back national holidays on July 5th and 6th. In eight years, I've never experienced summertime in Prague with so few people. The borders are open to other European countries, but there's still not that many tourists. Today is Cyril and Methodius Day. To celebrate the two Byzantine Greek brothers who brought Christianity and a Slavic alphabet to Czechia, back when it was the Moravian Empire in the 800s. So uh, Jen and I are headed to Kamarjová Vila uh, for the open house of the government buildings, and this is our first one of the summer, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We read the brochure in English, and uh, hopefully we uh, can make it through, even though it's just a Czech-only tour with, uh, with what we read. Usually at this time of year, the center of Prague is absolutely choking with tourists. But this year, I mean, look at this empty park. This summer, the Czech government has opened up five villas and palaces for free tours. So we thought we'd check out Kramarzová Villa, the official home of Czech prime ministers. What? Yeah, remember what I said about there being nobody in Prague? I neglected to mention all the Czechs who have been quarantined all spring in their cottages and are looking for a little city action. And they were all in front of us in line to see the Kromarzová Villa. After a two and a half hour wait, we finally got in to see the splendor of the Prime Minister's Villa, only to learn we weren't allowed to take photos. You're just gonna have to come and see it for yourself. My favorite part, of course, was the fantastic view of the red roofs of Prague. There are a few days open in July, August, and October, and I'll put the dates in the link below. Our next destination was the beer garden in Letna Park, high on a hill with a view of the city. In the Middle Ages, the plain supported a military camp, which was followed by private vineyards and gardens, and now a city park with a few places to grab a bite to eat or drink and enjoy the view. In 1989, 750,000 people gathered here in Letna for the Velvet Revolution to protest communism. This metronome was installed in 1991 and replaced a giant statue of Stalin, which had been installed in the 50s and taken down with explosives only seven years later. Last year, over 200,000 people gathered in Letna to protest the Czech Prime Minister, the very man who lives in the house we just walked through. A 
of all my favorite beer gardens in Prague, and there are quite a few. This one has the best view. And they started serving beer in reusable cups. No more trash bins overflowing with disposable plastic. Having two holidays in a row is exhausting. I know, wah wah. So July 7th, we celebrated Jan Hus Day by being lazy and staying local. If you've ever been to Prague, you've definitely met Jan Hus, whose statue graces the center of Old Town Square. He was a Czech hero who tried to reform the Catholic Church a full hundred years before Martin Luther provoked the Protestant Reformation in Germany. Just another example of a Czech not getting proper credit for his work. See Yara Zimmermann. Anyway, so local for us means a trip to the National Museum, which has recently been given a facelift, and she looks marvelous. We're going to the National Museum, where we've never actually been. Actually, I was here um, in 2015. They opened up the center stairwell for a concert, and we we sat on the stairs, but basically since we moved here in 2012, this entire building has been closed, um, waiting for construction. The entire outside was like dark and black and sort of left since throughout the time of communism, uncleaned, un, uh, kind of in disrepair and they opened it last year and it's just phenomenal looking from the outside. And they also have these kind of gorgeous gardens out front. This part used to be um, a little bit grimy, a little bit kind of, you didn't want to walk through at night and now it's just absolutely beautiful. The first striking thing we noticed besides the grand stairwell with a very impressive busts of famous Czech writers, philosophers, artists, and musicians. The first exhibit was an awe-inspiring display of the largest collection of minerals in the country. This collection has over a hundred thousand specimens, but only a small fraction of that is displayed here. I've always been obsessed with minerals and spent most of my childhood trying to break open rocks to see the crystals inside. Every kid did that, right? The next exhibit was right up Hans's alley. He's a bit of an amateur vexillologist. And this exhibit had Czech symbols and flags and crests, money and medals, border posts and more. Nice first page of the constitution. Pretty modern looking. The most modern exhibit was dedicated to the Velvet Revolution. It was quite moving to visit an exhibit commemorating such an important event that was experienced by people who are still alive to tell the tale. If you're able to visit Prague this summer, Please come and enjoy the relatively empty city with us. 
If you're American and are unable to make it this year, we'll keep the beer cold for you and see you in the future. What did you think of the museum? Oh, it was awesome. It was great. My first time there and uh, the exhibits were really cool, so I'm glad we went. It hit our sweet spots. Rocks and symbols. Thanks for spending our holidays with us. Uvidime se prishti tidan. Ciao.